Well done, Amelia. I felt like Paul Johnson for a minute then. I was asking to do something about two minutes before <laughs> they were about to do it, but I appreciate it. We've got to stretch each other, haven't we? And it's important. You know, we talk about bringing on a generation. I do appreciate you stepping up and saying that prayer for us. And, uh, you know, it's important. As I'll try and say throughout this morning, just how important it is to be together in unity, that we change the atmosphere wherever we are, you know, I'm going to be talking about changing the atmosphere. I'm going to give you the title and changing the atmosphere. And God changes the atmosphere, but, you know, when we come together in the Spirit of God, we change the atmosphere in the places where we are. You know, that song is one of my favorites. You know, and I have to write it down, even though it's one of those, break through every stronghold, shine through the shadow, burn like a fire. That's where passion comes from. Burning like a fire in the direction God wants to take us. Not always the way that we want to go, but we have to go the way God sends us. I'm sure we'd all pick different assignments if we could go to New York, head office or something like that. But God just wants us to be in a place where God wants us to be because that's where we can be most effective for our talents and our gifts and our time to play in this place. And I'll ask you another question during the sermon today, during the talk today is, are you roaring in anticipation of what God is going to do in your lives, in my life, and in the lives of those around us? I'm roaring with anticipation. I can't put a scripture on that, but I just I sense a roar of anticipation in me because God is wanting me to roar. I learned something new yesterday from a, a lady we sort of got introduced to. She has a doctorate. PhD in elephant medical thing. I didn't know such a thing exists, but she goes around all the zoos, looking all around the zoos, looking after um, elephants and diagnosing and bringing on the pups and uh, giving birth and helping them through that system. But she gave me a revelation. I, t I, I wish I could tell you this was out of the Bible, but what it said was in the Jurassic Park movie, the roar of the T-Rex that you hear on screen is a baby elephant having a tantrum true you wouldn't think it and what we've got to do is show the enemy the roar that God is putting to us because it won't sound like a glen in a tantrum it'll sound like the roar of a lion prowling away to devour and to break through darkness and to burn with a passion to burn with a passion this morning. I want you to roar with expectation and anticipation. I was telling Mark, I've made all my notes out this morning and I feel God's telling me to go a different way around. Same scriptures, but just in a different order. So there's no PowerPoint because that would certainly fail me this morning. But it's the same word, but I, think, I feel God just wants us to bring it out in a slightly different way. Remember from last week, we talked about St. Augustine. We're talking about faith. You know, and that faith is to believe what we do not see, and the reward of faith is to see what we believe. That's going to be my anthem. It's going to stick on my core values. It's going to stick on the vision that God's given us because, you know, I'm great, I'm great to see everybody online. Not that I can see you, but you know what I mean, metaphorically speaking, but you can see me. Great to see people in the building, lots of people away, and yet we're still buzzing in the building this morning. I'm well encouraged to see people. Uh, I'm, I'm really encouraged here to see these two youngsters, I think second time in church or first time in church. Great to see you all, family together. It's fantastic what God's doing and bringing people through into this community. And it's great to see that Amelia stepping up at short notice. It's not easy to pray for your first time in front of church, is it? But unless we do it for the first time, it will always be the first time we're going to do it. Next time, it'll be the second time. And I just want people to grow in the things of the kingdom of God. Yeah, because I've got that anticipation and expectation of what God is going to do for you and me. This weekend, as we've been in conference, by the way, everybody sends not love and greetings, but the encouragement from the discussions we've had and from what's been preached and what's been ministered that we're on the right track. I've had it so reaffirmed so many times. I get the privilege of going to AOG conference and people speaking into our lives. 
but I'm speaking to other people and they're encouraged about what we're doing. They're delighted to see that we're a village church with a city mentality because it's a city of God mentality. I don't restrict this church by being in a village because we can only anticipate so many people will turn up. I've got a bigger vision of who God is than that that can fill this place ten times over on a Sunday if that's where God wants us to be because I have an expectation and a roar of what God's going to do in this place. We sang a song with Martin Smith on Friday night. I was going to close with this, but, but, and it just got me. It's an older song, because I'm waiting. I can't sing. Don't sing, Glenn. Don't sing. Don't sing whatever you do. Do not, I nearly did then. Don't sing whatever you do. Read it. Don't sing whatever you do. Thanks, Lewis. <laughs> I mean, it starts off, I'm not going to read it all, but in faith... If faith can move the mountains, let the mountains move. We come with expectation waiting here for you. I'm waiting here for you, God. And when it says here, I don't mean in this spot for seven days a week, but I'm waiting here in anticipation of what God's going to do in my life, your life, the life of this community. I'm so excited. Waiting here for you with our hands lifted high in praise and it's you you that we adore as we look upwards sing hallelujah and I've been singing that I've probably been driving Margaret crazy she's probably glad I fell asleep on the way back from Harrogate I wasn't driving so that's okay (laughs) but I fell asleep on the way back from from Harrogate yesterday from the conference there's just so much of what God's doing that we're mirroring We're not out on a limb with what we're doing. We're in the core and the centre of what God's doing across this nation. And that encourages me. I knew we were in the right place, but it's great to have it affirmed time and time again. It doesn't matter whether you're a mega church of a thousand or a church of ten or a church of fifty or a church of a hundred. God is on the move. God is doing the same thing. God is encouraging people to step up, to expect something from him, to expect something from him. And let's see the mountains move. Let's see walls broken down. Let's see people set free. Start to believe it, even though we can't see it. I know this auditorium, auditorium, you see, that's how you get bigger, isn't it? You call it an auditorium, don't you? That's a thousand seater at least, surely. But in this building, I know, I've seen the numbers that God is sending our way. But I've seen it by faith. And the reward of that faith will be seeing what I believed. And I know you believe that too. But when we don't see it, we've got to be encouraged to know that it's coming. I'll be talking about Elijah later on. Just to encourage us down that road of what God is going to do in our lives. You know, but the thief comes in, in John 10.10. Comes only in order to steal, rob and destroy. And he still does that today, doesn't he? He still wants to come in and give us trials and tribulations and and, and sickness and money issues and job issues and all that sort of thing. But I want to just reaffirm that despite all of that, because Jesus has finished it on the cross for you and me, we're in eternity with him. We're with him in his presence. But he says this, but I come, Jesus, that you may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance. Have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. I want to overflow with joy. Yes, we've got money, but you know, we might have money problems, we might have issues and uh, a limp here and there or difficult issues. But I want to tell you that should not stop us. I can preach that because I have had it and I've known it and I've walked through it. I've walked through one season, I've come out the other side by the grace of God. I'm walking in a different place to what I was maybe three weeks ago. This body is behaving. But I've gone out of one season, one, one cycle, and I'm moving forward with God. And then something else may come, but I still believe and I'm excited and expected about what God is going to do in our lives, in your life, in our lives. That Ephesians 3.20, I use it a lot. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly this is from the uh, amplified version super abundantly more than all that we dare 
ask or think. Infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes and dreams. According to his power, his power at work in us, in working you, at work in you, at work in you, work in you. That might scare people. I'm not doing it to scare people. I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it and walk in it in my own life. But that power that God wants to... Sometimes we just say, God, do it. And you need somebody to say, I'll go. I'll do. I'll step. I'll be there. Because he uses us. Uh, I've got a quote. And this is last minute throwing, so I do apologise. But at the MIT graduation on Friday at the AG conference, where I was blessed to be a year ago, I can't believe it's a year since we graduated, but they've given a different gift to the, to the graduating students this year. I got a widow's mite. I'm not criticising that. But when I saw Simon Jarvis pull this lovely worn-up box about a foot and a half long out of his, I'm thinking, I started feeling envious already. But he opened it up. I thought he pulled out Harry Potter's wand. I was just about to start texting the AOG saying, this is, you know. But it was a conductor's baton. It was given to all the students. And then he read this quote that's inscribed inside each and every box. And it's from a famous Benjamin Zander who ran the Bob, uh, Boston Philharmonic Orchestra. And he said after a revelation... Because everybody loves the conductor, everybody praises the conductor. But he says, the conductor of an orchestra doesn't make a sound. He depends for his power on his ability to make other people powerful. He says, when I wave that baton, the tenor knows when to play. The trumpet knows when to come in. The keyboard plays, the drummer starts his beat. And he said, but it's the power to bring people together in their individual roles and their gifts to play a wonderful sound. And Jesus is our conductor. And he's conducting you and me when we allow him to conduct us with the instrument that he's giving us, with that that he's giving within us, we start to make a wonderful sound for him. And you know, Friday night, we didn't have an orchestra, we had Martin Smith, and the worship's been brilliant. But you know, Martin Smith seemed to get up and he started playing that song. Effortless. And the atmosphere changed. 1,920 people in an auditorium. And you sense the presence of God and the atmosphere changed. Because we were in unison. We were in unity. We were singing the same tune so that Jesus' atmosphere, the presence of God, could come into that place. And I want you to know the presence of God, that God is conducting you and me. He's got a part for you to play. He's got a part for everybody to play. And if you don't play your part, we're missing a woodwind instrument. We're missing a drum beat. It's important we play together because God's got great expectations of you and I don't want to limit his expectations by my limits that I put on him because my God's got no limits. My God's got no limits. God can do all things, but God can do all things through me, through you. I've got no limit to what my God can do. There's some difficult situations out there, and I continually pray that there be breakthrough and restoration in relationships, in people's lives, in our communities. But I'm going to the tune of God. I'm going with a manifesto that my limitations are not going to limit him. I want to be in his limits, in his power, through his spirit, to bring joy, hope into this world, that I might know my Lord Jesus Christ and all that he's done for me. Are you roaring with anticipation of what God's going to do? I am. And even if you don't shout out and say you are, I can see it in you. Right? I can see it in you, an anticipation of what God's going to do. Because anticipation is different to a desire. Desire is something that we want. But having an expectation is knowing that it's Amazon's already posted the parcel. And it'll be with us. And we're going to 
we'll get a bit of a text to say it's on its way, but, you know, it's an anticipation knowing that God's going to deliver. God's going to deliver. And I want to raise that expectation in you this morning. And, you know, every one of us has got to give. But look, if we never went to Genesis, chapter 1. Now, in this, my NIV, it's 1964, so it uses man. But just remember, in Galatians, it talks about you're neither Jew nor Gentile, slave or free, man or woman. We are all united as one in Christ Jesus. This is a generic man who was made first and put in the God. That's all this means. So please don't misread anything into that. But it says this. I'm sure I wrote it down somewhere, not what we want. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish and the sea, over the birds in the air, over living, every living thing that moves on the earth. I am blessed. God wants you to be blessed. He intended us to be blessed. I can't change what happened in the Garden of Eden. I can't change the fact that somebody made a decision that changed everything and needed Jesus Christ and the story to come. But God created us to be blessed. And when Jesus said it's finished on the cross, when Jesus handed himself over because nobody took his life, he did it freely and willingly for you and me, when he handed his life over and said it's finished, one of the seven sayings of Jesus on the cross, when he handed that over and said it's finished, we can be restored to that relationship with God. We know the eternity to come. We've got uh, ascension next week, so we can see what's going to take place when, if we die before his coming in his presence. But he wants us to be blessed, wants us to grow. And you know, God's seed in us is designed to grow. God's planted a seed in you and me to grow. And the great news I've got for you this morning is a better gardener than me. He knows when to water, when to feed. He knows when to prune. He's a fantastic God, but he wants that seed to grow. And I guarantee you, every one of us here has got a seed that God is cultivating and bringing through. And sometimes we feel the heat, but we're in a greenhouse. God knows we need a bit of heat. Sometimes we're on a windy hill and we can feel the (laughs) coming at us. But God's a good gardener. Waiting, a plant is always for the moment of growth when the sun comes out. It's waiting to grow, and I'm eager to grow. But sometimes, I think Lorraine's just laid a new lawn, and if she's like me when we laid our new lawn, I'm out there every morning measuring to see how much it's grown. But you know, if you went away for two weeks, you came back, you'd have a lawn. You wouldn't notice. And God wants us to grow doesn't want us to measure every day. He just wants to know that we're growing. He wants us to move in the things of the kingdom of God and to grow for him and to be with him. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. Keep on growing. Have dominion. You know, it's a a difficult word, but it's just that he wants us to have the dominion over our life that we were given in the garden. That our life is our life. We're with God. Our God reigns. Well, I say it for myself. My God reigns over me. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Sometimes not always difficult to see it when we look at our world and our nation. Whatever happens in the next election, whoever gets in, our God reigns. Just remember that. Our God reigns. He won't allow anything to happen that's not going to benefit him at some point. And he'll use whatever takes place. I know we've all got different political views. I'm not saying you shouldn't have. I don't mean that. But if you don't win the next election, whichever party you're all voting for, know that God is still in control. Know that God is in control because our God reigns. God wants to super abundantly do more than we ever ask or imagine. Can you imagine what that is? Can you begin to believe what that is? I know people here that I can begin to imagine what I know of their life, what that might be. Well, I'm praying for that. We need to pray for one another. And if you've got nothing to pray for, rejoice and pray for others and pray for the season, for the power and the build-up for when some season hits you. 
but I rejoice. But I want to multiply in God's presence. I want to change the atmosphere because my flowers and my flute are blooming. We need flowers and trees for oxygen. This world needs Jesus Christ's atmosphere. Help them to breathe with the things of the kingdom of God. We need it. They need it. We have it. And I want to pass it on to others. I want to deliver it as God asked me to deliver it. I want to see people blessed. I want to know that every bad decision doesn't stop them coming to know Jesus. We've been restored because of a bad decision by our forefathers. But Jesus came to restore it on the cross. He said it's finished. I want to know infinitely more of the power of God in my life. Not to lord it over anybody. I just want to be good at changing the atmosphere. Creating a thirst in people's lives to know that there is something out there that will quench your thirst. It will change your life. And in that you remember that God created me. So what is changed is all the stuff I've picked up. He created me. So it's not going to change your personality. God just wants to grow you to be the man or the woman that he created you to be, that original seed that he put in your life. I'm encouraged by that. God has no limits. God's expectations should be our expectations. Super abundantly, I love that word in the Amplified Bible, super abundantly more, infinitely more. Your kingdom come, we pray in the Lord's Prayer. Well, let me tell you some things I wrote down here. Heaven's full of joy. Heaven is full of power. Heaven's full of worship to him who is able. When we pray for God's kingdom here on earth, are we, are we showing the joy, the praise, and the worship? Because that's what I want in people's life. I want them to know joy, even with situations that they're facing. I want them to know the power of God, the resurrection power of God, and that there's, there's such joy and worship to him who is able to do immeasurably more than ever I can ask or imagine. And that's what we've got to keep remembering. Because if we don't remember that, we limit God by our own limitations. We limit God by our limitations. And I believe today God wants you to rip off your limitations, widen your lens, widen the box, just open the fling wide the door and believe that God can do something in your life that you are saying that you can't. But I believe God is saying, you can. You can. You can. You can. You can. You can change the atmosphere. You can bring down the kingdom of God in the room that you're standing. You can bring down the joy and the worship and the praise and the power of God in that place. And you know, sometimes when we're talking to people, it becomes uncomfortable and difficult because we're just not quite there. And I'm encouraging you, not discouraging you. I'm not criticising, I'm trying to build you up. But when we believe in something with a passion, like we believe in football, and we talk about football, men talk about football and jobs as if it's second nature. But he believes in Manchester United, and so he should. Not a brilliant season, but he should still believe in them because that's his team. I can believe in Mansfield because we got promoted. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> But do you know what I mean? We're passionate about something that we believe in and we spend time in. And we need to be like that about Jesus. It shouldn't be something that we add on because that makes it uncomfortable. But if we're living the life and we're believing in who we are, we're believing we're children of God, our conversation doesn't have to be you're washed in the blood of a lamb, but our conversation about Jesus and the life that we live that is part of my life 24-7 should be easy to talk about as if I was talking about Mansfield Town promotion. But we make it difficult. Why? Because it's personal. But it is personal. Personal to me. And I just want you to get hold of who Jesus is and get to that point where we naturally, through his power, we speak about his life. That's where testimonies are important. Not just our testimony of conversion, but what happened. Just I heard a fantastic testimony on Friday 
Paul Weaver, most of you might know Paul Weaver, he's previous, previous, he was very well connected to this church through Paul and Jill. I didn't know, but his dad had Smith Wigglesworth stay at their house, and, the be and his dad was quite poorly. Paul's dad was quite poor. I don't think he might be sharing this. As he shared it, it's online now, but it's not my story, it's his. But the day after he left, Smith Christmas was left, his dad went and slept in his bed where he'd been, woke up completely healed. That's the power of God. Now, he's not around anymore, Christmas was. It's about what we do. Carry the anointing. Carry the power of God. You might not have the power for healing, but you have the power of restoration. You have the power of breakthrough in people's life. You have the power of releasing chains in people's life. I want to encourage you in that. I don't think I need to go into Genesis. I was going to talk about the provision that God made in the garden, the four rivers, but that's another sermon. I can do another sermon on, uh, on, on that. I'm going to do it because it speaks into our vision. In, in Genesis 2, when he puts them in the garden... It goes into a long thing, but basically it gives them a river, and that river branches into four other rivers. Pishon, Gion, Eliki, and the Euphrates. Now, just let me cut short on this, tell you, if you don't know this already, what those names mean. Pishon means increase. It gave Adam a source of increase. The power of God is our power of increase. Gion means bursting forth or breakthrough. It gave him the power to burst forth and to break through. That's part of our prayer vision. That's why we're praying to see breakthrough. This so encouraged me. And, and the reason I hesitated, because you know me in words, uh, Ian might correct me, but Idikale, the third river, means rapid or acceleration. Last week we talked about the engine and hitting the accelerator and then turning the engine on. And God says... He gave him the provision of acceleration and being rapid. And I believe God's talking to us about the acceleration and how we can be rapid in the things of the kingdom of God. Then there's the river of the Euphrates, which means fruitfulness. And when we're fruitful, we'll change the atmosphere. And when we change the atmosphere, we see the power of God come down into people's lives. I don't know about you, I want to be fruitful. But you know, I keep saying to myself, when I say to God, I want to be fruitful... He keeps saying to me, don't get picky about who picks the fruit. If we're honest, some of us are more easy to talk to certain people than other people. But God's saying, if you want people to know the fruit that you're bearing, you've got to be prepared to share that in season and out of season to whoever wants to pick it. And I think that's important not just to grow fruit, to be what God's called us to be, but are our people that we may not like, we may not know, have got a lifestyle we don't like, to pick that fruit. You know, they might know God, and they might take that opportunity to change the atmosphere in their life, in their home, in their place, to see restoration, breakthrough, and the miracle of God upon their lives. The cross was a restoration to an abundant Life. I haven't got time to go into Elijah. It's about the rain of the seven times, but he saw the cloud. But the phrase from that scripture that I haven't got time to read, he says, Do you hear the sound of rain? I want to say the reason I'm just picking that out, read the scripture, it's 1 Kings. I hear the sound of rain. I know the rain is coming. I know that rain will change the atmosphere. It's not that we're doing anything wrong now, but I think, you know, we've talked about levels at conference this week. So we're 100 years old as an organization, not us, but AOG. We're 100 years old as celebrating that. But God wants us to keep going up a level, up a level. Because what we've seen of Christ is amazing. And God's power. But God says there's more. Reach up to another level because he is able. I'm here waiting, arms open wide, to see the mountain move. People are waiting for a mountain to move and I'm still praying for that mountain to move. 
I believe in that that mountain will move. Not just because it sounds good from the front, but if we don't believe, we've got no hope in that prayer. I believe in the things of the kingdom of God. Seven times they walked around Jericho before it fell and gave a shout of praise and the walls fell. I want you to keep on praying. Keep praying for breakthrough till you get a solid word from God. It's a foundation of who we are. Passionate about God, passionate about people, and passionate about life in all that we do. And Unitas always got another season. <laughs> Just hope Stag don't come straight down next week, uh, next year, or she'll be uh, adding all these comments back to me. And then Hebrews 11, where I started last week taken from the message, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust that I have is in God and the risen Savior. It's not in man. There's people in this room I trust and I'd go through, I want to say go through hell, but I couldn't think of another thing, but I'd go with them into places. But it's in God that I trust because I know they trust in God. Faith is a firm foundation underlying everything that makes life worth living. Amen? Are you willing and expecting? Are you waiting for the atmosphere to change the rain? Do you want to get the team up, please? Daniel's watching, I think. I can't remember whether I used this quote last week, but from a guy called George Muller. He says this, Faith does not operate in the realm of the possible. There's no glory for God in that. No glory for God in that which is humanly possible. Faith begins where man's power ends. I trust God. I pray that as we go into the next worship song, we'll stand with arms open wide, with expectation about what God's going to do in our lives. I'm waiting here for you, Lord. I'm dying to sing, but it will just put everybody off. But it's just my heart wants to sing. But I wait till everybody else. We're not singing that song, by the way. Just uh, don't build it. But, but uh, uh, waiting here for you. I'm waiting here for you. You are the Lord of all creation. And still you know my heart, the author and salvation. You loved us from the start. I know that. Do you know that, that God loved you from the start, even when we didn't acknowledge him? And I want you to know today that Jesus is reaching out to you. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever you feel, a lady in this room once said to me, just try and see how you get on. I just tried, and 30 odd years later, I'm just alive for Christ. Just alive for what Jesus did in my life. I just want people to know that joy. I wasn't unhappy. In fact, I had joy in my life. But this joy, this joy is an eternal joy that will carry with me through this life and into the next. And I want people to know that joy and then carry that into the presence of the next life and to go in and for Jesus, God, to say, my faithful servant, my faithful servant, I want to serve him in all that I do. Amen.